right, well, good evening to all of you. I think we'll get underway. First, I'd like to welcome you to the Center for the National Interest, and I'd like to thank its president, Dimitri Symes, for bringing us uh, together this evening. Thank you uh, for, for that. I'd also like to welcome Hank Greenberg uh, to the center. He's uh, its chair, and I first, in that regard, want to thank you for your dedication to this center for many years. Starting at its creation and its development and advancement, you've devoted time, energy, passion, and substance really to uh, the center, and now it is, as it is the Center for the National Interest, and really thank you for that. Hank Greenberg has also not only made a substantial contribution to this center uh, intellectually and uh, in many capacities, but he also, as I think a number of you know in this audience, has also made a very substantial contribution when you were vice chair of the Council on Foreign Relations. And I had to mention that because I happen to be the head of the Washington office of the Council on Foreign Relations, and my first meeting with Hank Greenberg, by the way, was an interview. Those of you who know Les Gelb, he was the president at the time of CFR, and Pete Peterson was the chair. So Les Gelb and I are sitting outside of uh, Hank Greenberg's office, and Les actually put the fear of God in me because he said, we're going in to meet with Hank Greenberg. You know he's a renowned businessman, he's made a tremendous mark on the development and rise of AIG, and you know what? He's very direct, he's very snappy, time efficient, no nonsense, and you know, he'll look you right in the eye. And he told me, make sure that you are direct, look him right in the eye, and get to the point. So I said, Les, I will. Well, the good news is I got the job. <laughs> so, but that was my introduction to Hank Greenberg. Well, as you know, today we're gathered uh, to mark uh, and congratulate, if I may say, uh, Hank on his book, The AIG Story. The book, uh, I think, uh, really underpins what Hank Greenberg is about. In fact, I liked very much Henry Kissinger's uh, inscription in the back in which he talks about your being truly a major figure in American business in the 20th century, someone who is principal, strongly committed, and does not waver on one's principles in a time of crisis. And I think this story really undergirds and really substantiates that. The book is not only a chronicle of his personal story, starting with uh, his departure from being an army officer in the Korean War and his entry into the insurance industry uh, with Continental Casualty uh, Company, but then going on to become uh, the head of uh, and CEO of AIG, bringing it to what became literally the largest insurance company in the world with almost over a trillion dollars worth of assets. So there's the personal side, but there's also the other side of the story, which is a very instructive one and one which we're gonna probe with you especially today. And that is the substantive side of this book which specifically sets forth some very profound questions, profound and serious questions about government regulation in the financial industry. And what are the unintended consequences of this kind of regulation? And what it does actually, as in this case, we've witnessed the rise and the fall of AIG. What it does on the personal level to the organization and in this case, to a business that was truly a national asset to the United, for the United States. This is a must read, and with that, I want to turn it to Hank Greenberg, so please join me in welcoming here, him to you today. Paula, thank you very much. And uh, I want to also recognize that uh, uh, Dimitri, who is the chap who really uh, made this organization go. Uh, I live in New York, he's here in Washington, that's where the organization is, and I try to get, we talk quite frequently, uh, but uh, uh, he's the man that's built this organization, so I don't, no misunderstandings about that. I also want to recognize the ambassador from the Philippines, Joey Kresha. Uh, 
uh, we worked together for many years. Uh, he ran one of our biggest companies in the Philippines. And I'm delighted that um, uh, he's been recognized to be the ambassador to the United States. Now let me um, begin. Why, why did I write this book? But a couple of reasons, really. One, uh, there, were, there were hundreds of thousands of people at AIG uh, who worked with me for years, and I believe that their story had to be told. What really happened? How did we get from, when we went public, we went public to uh, $300 million of market value. Uh, when I left at the end of, in the March of 2005, it was $180 billion. So we had great growth, uh, and it was accomplished by many, many people, and uh, their story had to be told. Many have left AIG, and I'll get into that in a moment. AIG was an outgrowth of the Star Companies, which was a small collection of insurance companies that C.B. Star, the founder, had put together. Uh, and uh, uh, I joined him and after several years, uh, I succeeded him. Uh, we had added several insurance companies, small ones, and then took them public in something called AIG. But the star companies were never part of AIG. They founded AIG. They were kept out um, because they were too small to really uh, put into AIG. And I'm, I'm very thankful that we did that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, um, but it made no sense to put them in at the time. Uh, we grew rather rapidly. We had, there are several things that we had in our, in our genes that made us uh, grow from where we were to become the largest insurance company in history. Obviously, it was the people. Uh, but uh, you want to call us mavericks. We were that. We were innovative. Uh, we broke with the, the typical traditional insurance type of underwriting uh, where most of the business was either uh, automobile or homeowners uh, with very little uh, growth in anything that was new. All the large risks were going to Lloyd's of London, and uh, we believed that we should be a market in the United States that really uh, could accomplish that. That was on the general insurance side. On the life insurance side, we had a small company in the Philippines that didn't stay small for long that, that Joey Quesha ran uh, called Philam Life. Uh, and it became a very huge company in the Philippines, as we did with other companies. Uh, we had a company called Alico, American Life had operated in many, many countries around the world. Uh, and so we brought a new vision to the insurance industry, uh, both in products, uh, in innovation, and management structure. Uh, we introduced something that I had learned when I worked in the Continental Casualty, that didn't work, and that was a great company, but it never worked. They, most companies had an agency department and an underwriting department. And at the end of the year, they always fought. If, you, if they lost money, one would blame the other, and that just went on and on and on. We introduced a profit center structure where one person was in charge of the products and the marketing of it, uh, and so you knew who was accountable. There was no you know, blaming anybody else. It was your accountability. And that, that structure was so embedded in AIG's thinking that you know, the people who understood it and flourished in it stayed with the company. Those who couldn't live under that kind of a structure, they didn't want to be held accountable, uh, went off to our competitors. That made us stronger and them weaker. Uh, and it worked quite well. This operated worldwide. And there was a culture in the company that, you know, it doesn't, culture doesn't happen automatically. You create a culture in a company. And uh, the culture we had was, uh, was a winning culture. Uh, uh, the senior people all uh, worked together very well. And the board of directors initially of AIG was made up of mostly inside people who are running the company. We had some outside people, obviously, and some very fine people at the time. All that changed as when one, so the first part of the book touches on that, but to show really what we, what we meant to the country overall, uh, there's a couple of vignettes I'll just talk about briefly. Uh, 
there was a book written on, 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 on something called the Glomar Marine. 